What exactly do we mean when we use that word, the unconscious? Well, um, you can obviously uh, state it simply and say, you know, not conscious. Um, <laughs> and then it splits into the sort of medical meaning of unconscious as in coma or stupor. Um, and then the psychological meaning, which becomes, you know, I think that that's exactly our topic. You, you're going to have great difficulty getting any agreement on it. But I think that the important thing um, in terms of the psychoanalytical tradition um, is that the unconscious mind is just that. It's a mind. It's not just something automatic, something out of consciousness, something that reflexively happens. It's an intentional agent um, that's part of you, that's making decisions, uh, 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 driving your, your, your volitional activities without your awareness. And most importantly, which is, I think, uniquely psychoanalytical, is that it resists uh, self-knowledge. So it's not just that it's outside of awareness, but that it doesn't want to be um, to become aware. So I think those would be some of the, the, the sort of central features of how, of how, at least within my um, uh, broad uh, discipline, uh, we would think about the unconscious. Now, I know people have been talking about the unconscious for, for decades, uh, probably for more than that. And Siri, I know you've, you've looked into some of the history of yeah, how I, people I, try I to frame this. I think it's interesting because now no one disputes that there is an unconscious. Um, there's n now something uh, called the cognitive unconscious or the adaptive unconscious. But when behaviorism uh, was reigning, um, they really did not want to talk about the unconscious. It made them think of Freud, and they were very much anti-Freud. But these conflicts go on. It's a very old idea. Some people uh, go all the way back to Ptolemy, who talked about uh, he didn't use, obviously, that we're way back now, but that in vision there were unconscious processes. And well before Freud, well before Jung, um, even Descartes in Passions of the Soul talks about the fact that a man could have had a childhood experience that he does not remember and that nevertheless affects him. So there it is in Descartes. None of us, I think, here are Cartesians. Um, Leibniz talked about unconscious perceptions, perceptions that were so small that, um, that you know, they, they weren't perceived. And then, again, in the 19th century, there were uh, two English guys, one that I like quite a lot, William Benjamin Carpenter, Carpenter who talked about unconscious processes, and the philosopher Sir William Hamilton. All we're talking about the unconscious. Now, there are wrinkles in the different ideas, but I think it's important to keep this in mind. It was not invented a few decades ago. So, so no, is there a clear <laughs> dividing line between the conscious and the unconscious? Well, it, uh, according, depends according to who. <laughs> yes, so, this is, this uh, is it, yeah. Uh, Siri, uh, sort of, the, really clearly put out, the different models of the unconscious, but I don't think people are necessarily talking about the same thing. Right. And this is the first problem we, we come into. And there are many people around the globe, billions, who would not say that they have an unconscious. They've got alternate modes of understandings. They have different ontologies, which for them perfectly suffice. But why would they resist that notion of the unconscious? They've got notions that they have that they consider perfectly adequate. You go to India and people talk about <coughs> karma. They talk about the Dharma. Yeah. They have different modes of self-understanding, different models of, of health and of healing. And I think one of the, the issues which will presumably be exploring tonight is the fact that in today's society, when people use the word unconscious, they often mean different things by it. Yes. Because as yeah. Siri's pointing out, there's a philosophical background. There's also a biological background, a physiological background, and a psychological background. And these usages get mixed up. So it's a term that becomes sort of ripe for confusion.